wanted to do something a little special, and we're going to be joined here in just a moment with a few moms um, who we wanted you to get to just hear a little bit of their journey, a few stories of them. And I was reminded this morning of the scripture that says, um, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Probably one, how many of you learned that very early on? I mean, I I think that might be one of the beginning ones that I learned. And um, it is so true. And I think in our journey as families, as mothers, or even as children who have mothers, Um, I think there's something powerful about knowing and understanding the beauty that comes um, when we allow the scriptures, when we allow God's word to truly be a lamp to our feet and to a light to our path. And so today we're going to celebrate really what scripture does for moms and how moms parent and lead in the world today. And so um, I am going to be joined here in just a moment. In fact, moms, why don't you come up? I'm going to be joined by three moms here from our church, um, Linda and Janelle and Julia, if you will give them a hand as they come on up. Um, Different moms with different experiences in different seasons in life, but we celebrate uh, what they bring. Some of them probably have been extended parents to you as well. Some of them uh, probably, just like with my child, have ferried your child around and cared for your child as well. And so we're going to just hear a few stories and a little wisdom from them that come both from the scripture and also just from their own experience of walking out, letting the Bible be the lamp to their feet and the light to their path. So we're going to start off with Linda. Linda Armstrong um, has been a part of our congregation for a very long time. She is a staple here for sure. She had four children. She has 13 grandchildren and one, like any moment now, any moment now, great grandchild. So Linda, would you come and just share with us some wisdom? Good morning. Is this, is this on? It is. You sound beautiful. Okay. You sound great. Thank you. (laughs) Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I'd like to take a look this morning at Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, or she, and when he or she is not, is old, they shall not depart from it. And I look at this scripture as an instruction to parents to embrace and train up the uniqueness of each of their children. And each child is born and created in the image of God and yet is a unique and authentic individual. No one is like them. No one has ever been like them. Everyone is unique. And I think as a parent, one of our challenges is to recognize and embrace that uniqueness, that Sometimes, you know, isn't isn't real easy. But I think there's three things that we can do. First, identify our children's unique talents and abilities. Be aware of the individual path that God has created for them to go down and then directing them in the way they should go. And when they're encouraged to embrace that path, it really encourages them in their unique identity in Christ and how they were created in his image. As uh, Cammie shared, my husband and I have four children, two boys, two girls, and they definitely are unique. And you'll see as I share a few things that there are some similarities, but we really had to look at their uniqueness. I, um, and trust me, we did many things wrong, (laughs) many things that, and I'm sure every parent who's sitting here looks back and goes, 
oh, I wished I had done that a little differently, or I wished I could go back and redo that. So we by no means did everything correct. But I reached out to my four children in preparing for this morning and asked them if each one of them would share something that either myself or my husband or both of us together did or said when they were growing up that encouraged them in their path and that still affects them today. Our oldest child, uh, a daughter, is, has always been very artsy and craftsy. And one of the things that we did, and she told me this it was such a huge thing for her, is that we allowed her pretty much a free reign with decorating her own room. She could paint it any color she wanted. We even provided her with inexpensive furniture that we allowed her to paint. And she could pretty much put anything on the walls as long as it was not inappropriate. So there were some guidelines. But to this day, she says that that has really blessed her. And uh, she's an activities director now, and she said that really um, has helped her in that way. Now. While she was painting flowers on her furniture, her younger brother, at about the time he was 12, he wanted a drum set. Well, we weren't sure if we could live with that or not. <laughs> so that took a lot of prayer. He finally convinced us that, you know, one little drum pad, what's that? Well, that grew to two drum pads, and somehow this 12-year-old boy put a whole drum set together. <laughs> we learned to live with it, of course, with some guidelines also. And he now serves the Lord as a music director in a large church up in L.A. And has been a professional drummer, has, has taught uh, drumming to many, many students. So we're grateful that we, we allowed that in our household. Our third child always loved to sing. And we encouraged her in that by letting her choose the high school she was going to go to, which had the music department that she felt she could enjoy, which she did. We also, when she graduated from high school, allowed her to take not start college. We were criticized for that, but we let her travel for a year with a uh, singing group and uh, that she enjoyed. And music is still a very important part of her life. She told me that the one thing that encouraged her uh, as she was growing up that I always said to her was, do it for the Lord. Whatever you're doing, singing or whatever, do it for the Lord, not for others. And that really encouraged her. Another thing, I, always, I got in the habit somehow way back as my kids were going out the door and performing or whatever they were doing, I would say, sparkle and shine for Jesus. Well, I often thought, you know, they probably think that's pretty corny. But our youngest son, who also is a worship leader now, said that that really encouraged him. He actually waited for me to say that as he went out the door. And he said, had I not said it, or had I maybe even said something differently, that he would have been kind of disappointed. He really looked forward to that. So sometimes something little that you might even think they're rolling their eyes at might make more of an impact than, than you think. Now, I know parents that those of you who are raising children now, that there are many influences out in the world. The enemy of our children's souls would love to influence them in not the right way to go. And let me just give you a, just some things that the Lord shared with me, some things of how you can arm yourselves in this endeavor. Number one, the things that I've already spoken of, encourage your children in their abilities, their giftings, their, all the things that God has given to them. Develop relationships with other parents, the same age of children that you may have, so you can walk through these things together, share your experiences, your, your challenges, cry, try together, pray together, all of this, but also maybe some older parents that have already walked through it and survived. And number, number three, my brain just went dead. Number three, uh, yes, is seek professional help. If there are some red flags, don't be ashamed to seek some professional help. That is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and discretion that the Lord has given you, and he's given you those resources to help. And the last one, and probably the most important, is spend time with the Lord yourself. If you are developing into that unique 
person that God made you to be, that will be the best model that you can be for your children. So spend time with the Lord and spend that time with the Lord in, in front of your children so they're, they're seeing that and you're modeling that. Thank you. That's so good. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. I think we just figured out one of her momisms, right? Sparkle and shine, everyone. Sparkle and shine. That's so good to train them up in the way that God's called them to go. Thank you for that wisdom. And I'm sure she would have plenty more for us as well. Uh, next is Julia. Julia Schmals, come on up. She is a mother of three, um, lovely. And I have the pleasure of talking and spending some time with them. And um, she's going to share a little bit too. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of you. Uh, the word that was on my heart, it's not even what I'm going to speak on, but it's just to honor motherhood today and to honor the fact that there is new life that is birthed out of moms in any capacity, right? That, there, that what motherhood represents is new life and resurrection life that comes. Mm -hmm. And that is so cool in the, in the father heart of God that we get to see in the mother heart of God, uh, the new life that comes. And so for, for some of you today, I just want to speak that over you, that, that there is a there's new life and that every time we celebrate our moms we get to celebrate the life that that God brings and so that's just such a gift uh, for me as my journey as a mom I'll tell you it's just so simple my kids uh, unfortunately like kind of mirror me in some ways and they reflect what I say and what I do whether I want to or not I don't know if you've ever experienced that but my kids are really the laboratory in which God is using to develop me as a person and as a mom. Mm -hmm. And they reflect me in ways that I love and they reflect me in ways that sometimes I don't love. And I have to say, okay, Lord, what do you want to teach me? And I will tell you that being a mom has driven me to my knees uh, faster than anything else I have ever known. It has shown me what it means to be a, uh, a daughter of the king. It's also shown me what, it, what humility is, uh, if I'm being really honest. And so part of my journey was then a number of years ago as I was just standing up before the Lord, asking the Lord, you know, praying into how to be a mom. And then honestly, my own stuff, a reflection of my own things that I needed to deal with were coming to the surface. And really beginning to um, seek God in those things, I began to, uh, to began to really press into prayer. And uh, Matthew 6, we all know it as the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. But if you read right before that, there is a couple of verses that I had never read before that really struck me. And uh, when the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, he said... Um, he says in verse five, on your, on your sheet, it starts at verse seven, but let me read it verse five. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you that they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who is in secret will reward you. And this is what's on your card. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will, hear, they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Let me say that again. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. And then he goes into the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And what shifted my heart was I said, God, you already know what I need. What if I don't know what I need? I pray the prayers based upon what I think I need and what I think you, I want, you want for me. But I began to pray, Father, what do you, what is your prayer for my life? And that began to change me. I began to hear from the Lord and the Lord began to answer that prayer. And he began to shift, this is what my prayer is for you. And then as a mom, I said, well, then my kids are your kids, Lord. Maybe you have a prayer for them different than what I even see. And I love how Linda talked about the uniqueness of our children because I was praying, you know, good prayers. Lord, let them honor you with their lives. Let them grow up in you. That's so good. But what I began to sense that shift as well, that the Lord would saw them each as these unique individuals and how can I pray for them? And I'll tell you a real practical story of how that played out, okay? Our emotions are like a thermometer for us. They tell us how we're really doing, whether we want them to or not. They just, you can be very raw. And maybe it's female hormones, I don't know, but it can, I can lose it just like <laughs> anything really quickly and be like bawling and like, why are you crying? I don't even know why, I just am. Um, but our emotions do that, right? And so my son, who I have permission to share this story, he came uh, home from school one day very upset. 
and he had been placed in a class different than his, all, of his sibling, uh, all of his friends, and you know how that happens sometimes. You just get put in the other class and you go, I mean, kind of what's wrong with me? Why am I not? And so he was just, on, he, but I don't know, he doesn't articulate his feelings like, yeah, I'm really bummed. I really could use some encouragement right now. He just gets mean, or, you know, kind of got mean and was like, you know, like upset. And so I'm wondering, and you know, my first reaction is, don't be like that, you know, like don't be upset, or you know, I would immediately kind of hit it from my, but I began, I'd been sitting with this. My father knows what I need before I even ask him. So, you know, father, what does my son need right now? What does he need? He needs to hear from you just like I hear from you. And so I, I said, okay, son, do you, you know, what, how are you feeling right now? And he says, well, I just feel unwanted and unlovable. Nobody wants to be my friend. Okay, um, I could say lots of things to that. Of course you're loved. Of course you're, the per, you know, you're a wonderful son. Everybody loves being around you. You have lots of friends. But again, sitting in this pastor, my father knows what we need before we even ask. Okay, father, he needs to hear from you because when we hear from God ourselves, it changes us. Mm-hmm. We can have encouragement. We can have words of, of, that people speak over us. But when we hear from the Lord, it changes everything. That's where transformation takes place. And so I asked, I said, do you think that God says that you are unwanted and unlovable? No. Okay. If God doesn't say that, then what does he say to you? I don't know. Well, let's ask him. So, Father, he, he thinks that he's unwanted and unlovable. What do you have to say to him? He sat there for a second, and immediately he said, I am so loved. Mm-hmm. And people love being around me. Can you receive that from the Lord? Yeah. Okay. Go. He ran off, skipped off, never heard about it again. (laughs) That's what it means to hear from the Lord. Our Father knows what we need before we ask Him, and we get the opportunity not only to receive it, but also to give it to our kids, to model it to our kids, and to lead our kids into it. That's so good. Thank you. That's so good. Our Father knows what we need. And what an encouragement, because how many times do we all just throw our hands up like, I have no clue. I have no idea. It's so good to have that. Uh, Janelle West is coming up, and many of you may know Janelle, or you may not. Uh, This is Kevin's wife. Most of you probably know her, but if if you've not been here a long time, you probably wouldn't. She's... She's like a quiet little sneaky mouse just moving around. She's so talented and so amazing, and I, I'm blessed to call her a friend. She has two children as well, and she's got a little bit of wisdom to share as well. Awesome. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start by reading um, the verse that I felt led to share with you, which is Psalm 16, 7 through 8. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Um, Personally, I did not grow up with a great example of a mom. Um, And, um, you know, there was a little piece to that in the video that we saw earlier when um, many years ago, um, you know, we found out that we were starting our family. That was so exciting. But there was also an absolute terror inside of me that I would somehow inflict that same pain onto my children. And that was the last thing I ever wanted to do. My mom had many mental and physical health struggles that were hidden from a lot of people around us, but there was a lot of hurt inside my home and inside my heart um, that I received. And, you know, giving, being given these children from the Lord and feeling like this huge responsibility of leading them to understand who God is, I, I would just didn't want anything to get in the way of them receiving the love of the Lord. Um, this verse has meant a lot to me for many, many years. Um, you know, I, I would kind of feel that panic in my heart of, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't have an example to follow here. But this verse says that the Lord will counsel me. And that meant so much to me when my heart would just get anxious and, you know, kind of, I don't, I don't know their individuals as, you know, my friends up there have said, what do I do? I, I don't even know what's right. I have a lot of maybe what's wrong examples, but the Lord will counsel me. The second part of that, um, verse seven there, um, is amazing. Even at night, my heart will instruct me. 
I don't know about you, but I wake up with worries at about 2 a.m. Yeah. that seem way bigger than they did at 2 p.m. for some yeah. reason, right? It's yeah. like that middle of the night, everything just just comes on you and can feel like so much. Um, and that still happens, like that doesn't go away. But this is a verse that I can remind myself of. Even at night, when I wake up, I think of this. This verse is actually taped to the inside of the medicine cabinet in my bathroom. So when I brush my teeth, when I get up in the middle of the night and I get a drink of water, I see it and I say, no, at night my heart will instruct me. And Lord, let me be quiet before you and hear what you're saying to me right now. And that has brought a lot of peace. Um, so another slant on how this verse has been helpful for me, um, as Cami mentioned, a lot of you know my husband, I'm usually Kevin's wife, which is fine, I'm happy and <laughs> proud to be that. Um, Kevin's vocational calling is to be a pastor, and he happens to serve in a church right now full time, which is great, y'all know that. Um, my vocational calling is to be a biologist and a professor. Um, and that is exactly where God has sent me to, send, to share his love and his compassion with college students as I teach science. And I absolutely love it. It is where he has, um, has set me. Um, but as a lot of um, you know, my friends who have, have careers and, and outside of the home and trying to raise kids and do everything, it's a lot. It's really overwhelming. Um, even, you know, you have your job struggles, and then you try not to take them home. And when you're at work, you always think about your kids and there's just this constant like back and forth um, there. And sometimes there's so many balls up in the air that you just don't, there's no way I can hold them all up, right? Something's gonna fall. And that adds to more of those middle of the night worries at 2 p.m., right? <laughs> um, but that verse eight says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. It's not my job to figure everything out. I don't have to figure out every problem at work, every nuance of my children as much as I want to. How do I be a good wife? How do I pay bills and plan budgets and groceries and all that fun stuff that we do too? Um, my job is really kind of itemized out there in verse eight. I keep my eyes at the Lord and keep him at my right hand. And so what does that mean? For me, that means spending time with the Lord. And I know that can almost feel like a burden sometimes because, you know, it's like this guilt of you didn't spend your time with the Lord today. You didn't take it in small doses. Just stop and listen to God. You know, take those moments. Maybe it's, maybe it's one verse you focus on for a week in an overwhelming week. God can do miracles with what little you open your heart to him for. So don't hear that out of guilt hear that out of just a draw of love from the Father. Like, as you keep your eyes on him, and we're not gonna be perfect, we are gonna stumble, but that promise says that when he's at my right hand, I will not be shaken, okay? So whatever you, know, you find yourself today, whether you're a mom or a, or a dad or just a single person or a child, gosh, we all go through things that are so overwhelming sometimes mm -hmm. and we don't know what to do. We're, we're struggling for the answers. And I hope that this verse encourages you. The Lord will counsel you. Keep your eyes on him and you will not be shaken. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you. That's so good. Um, I think those are such healthy reminders, really for all of us, but especially for so many of us who's, who maybe work outside of the home, and, and we do, we try to keep everything happening and all the balls in the air. And that's such a great scripture of encouragement as well. And um, is this not just a wealth of wisdom right here? Like I could just sit back down and we could just keep hearing things. So thank you, ladies. Um, we did, I think when you came in, each family received one of these. And I would encourage you, if you tucked it inside a Bible or set it aside or put it in a purse, would you just pull that out? Because in just a couple minutes, we're going to refer back to this. And I'm going to ask you to join with me in doing something. But before we do that, um, I just wanted to share just a quick story of my own of a, a major mom failure in my life. Um, I mean, 
major. And when you hear it, you're going to be like, in fact, this morning I was like, oh, dear Jesus, please don't let them judge me. Like Christy and Gabe um, will say to me, sorry, you can never serve with children ever again. Um, But I had this, this panic moment of being real and being honest. But when my daughter, my youngest daughter, Callie was three, um, she loved a cartoon called Olivia the Pig. We had every Olivia the Pig book. We watched every Olivia the Pig TV show. She she thought she was Olivia the Pig. I would come into her room, and if Olivia the Pig had created um, impressionistic drawings, uh, Callie created them, I would come into her playroom and they'd be all over the walls taped with tape that I don't even know where she got it. Like, I don't even know. This girl imitated everything that Olivia the Pig did, and we had a little fun joke in our family, and we would go outside to the front yard sometimes, and she would sit and draw with chalk or play in the front yard or watch cars go by or whatever, and she would say to me, because Olivia the pig did this, mom, I'm going to take a trip around the world. And Olivia the pig's mom would say, don't cross any streets. And so this was a regular, like, you know, fun little game that we would play. And so one day we're outside and she says to me, goodbye, mom, I'm going on my trip around the world. And I said, don't cross any streets. And I turned around for two seconds. I was helping take care of a friend's daughter and she needed help with the homework. And so I ran inside to grab something, comment to her about something. And I promise you, it could not even been more than two minutes. It could not have been, you're all like, whatever, Cammy, we don't believe you. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, I come back outside and my child who is normally sitting right there drawing out her trip around the world is gone. And I walk back in the house. Did you see Callie? Did she come back in? I check the back. Callie, Callie, Callie. Check the backyard. Did she go in the back? Where's Callie? There is no Callie. I'm starting to panic and I'm thinking, all of a sudden it hits. Oh my gosh. She's taken it seriously this time and she is going on a trip around the world. (laughs) And I have no idea. And I walk back out the front door and I'm now in complete panic mode because not only have I lost, I know better than this. Come on right? The guilt, the shame, the I know betters, and the sheer panic of where my child is has now taken over. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right? And I walk out the door and on top of that, there are multiple directions she could go from our house. I'm not even sure which way to go. Just, you've all talked about that. I did not know even which way to go. And I remember just going, oh my gosh, Lord Jesus, what do I do? And I'm so, like, even saying it now, I can feel that rising thing in my stomach, in the pit of my stomach. And, uh, I, is all I can get is, oh Lord Jesus, help me, I don't know what to do. And I walk out and I start walking down the sidewalk to see if I can maybe see her cute little feet somewhere. And here is a lady that I don't know following my child who, with no shoes, is just toddling home, all smiles, jabbering, whoops, jabbering away to the lady who's walking her home. I don't know this lady, so I have no idea to this day how far my child got is all I know is when she ran for a three-year-old, she could run fast. So I have no idea how far away from home she was. And she got back and the lady was so nice. I was mortified. I was so, I felt so much guilt and shame. What kind of mother am I? Who does this? All those things that you walk through. How, and then, then you start in on all the things that could have happened. All the things that could have happened. And I began to just compile them all in my mind and panic begins to set in. I am now a total emotional wreck. And I say to Callie, honey, what were you doing? I took my trip around the world. But sweetheart, mom, you said not to cross any streets. I didn't. (laughs) The crazy thing is she could have gone from our house all the way to Golden Lantern, the major road, without crossing any streets. (laughs) I have no idea how far she got. Follow this up, I called my mom. I thought this is the moment of reckoning. She's going to kill me. I just about lost her granddaughter. This is not gonna be good. And I was, all the guilt, all the shame, all the what have I done, I, I, the panic of what could have happened, all these things are on my mind and I call my mom. And I tell her the whole story. And there's silence on the other end of the phone. And I thought, that's it. She's already hopped on a plane. She's already flying from Nebraska. She's going to come take my child. And my mom says to me, honey, isn't it wonderful that you dedicated your child to the Lord? So that in the moments that we are not the perfect mom, he steps in. My heart did something in that moment 
Because with all my failures, <laughs> with all my flaws, with all the ways I could ruin a child, my mom gave me the wisdom I needed in the moment. And from that day on, that's guided my heart. Psalms 37, seven through eight says, how precious is your steadfast love, O oh God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights. This scripture became that moment in my heart. The moment of recognizing that I can't always do it right and I won't always do it right. But my God, who I have dedicated and given this child to, never leaves her. He never forsakes her. She is one of his children and she rests under the wings of the Almighty God. Little did we know that this child would take us on all kinds of journeys that we'd never been on before um, and all kinds of things. Little did we know the world would bring us COVID and a strange season where life would be so difficult and so challenging for her. We had no idea what was to come. But those words of my mom and the words of the scripture of Psalms 37, seven through eight, rings through my heart over and over and over again in those moments of fear, in those moments of, I don't know if I can trust my child to go into college classes when she's a freshman in high school. I don't know if I can trust these things. Being able to say, I've dedicated my child to the Lord and he takes care of her even more than what I can do. And that word has just been a solid resting in my heart so many times when I've wondered and when I've been unsure. And this morning, I'm going to invite you, if you have this sheet here, I want us to just take a moment and first honor moms and just pray over moms. And so um, in just a moment, if you are here with your family, um, I'm going to ask all the moms or if you are a spiritual mom to people in your world, I'm gonna ask you to stand. And I want us to just take a moment to pray over those people. Would you take these scriptures and begin to speak them as words of blessing and life over their lives? Would you say about them, God knows what you need. You have everything you need. Would you say over them, your family will take refuge. You fear not because God is with you. And I'm gonna invite you to just pray those things.